So we need to look at the distribution component of CloudFront in a bit more detail because there's a lot of things that we can set in here. Uh, and I'm not even showing you them all, but let's just go through it so we have an idea of the kinds of things we can do with it. So again, a distribution is a collection of edge locations. Uh, and the first thing you'll, you're going to do is you're going to specify the origin. And again, that's going to be S3, EC2, ELB, or Route 53. Uh, and when you set up your distribution, what's really going to determine the, the cost and also how much it's going to replicate across is the price class. So here you can see um, if you choose all edge locations, it's going to be the best performance because your website is going to be accessible from anywhere in the world. But, you know, if you're operating uh, just in North America and the EU, you could limit the amount of servers it replicates to. Um, there are two types of distributions. We have web, which is for websites and RTMP, which is for streaming media. OK, um, you can actually serve up streaming video under web as well. Um, but our TMP is a very specific protocol, so it is its own thing. Um, when you set up behaviors, there's a lot of options we have. So we could redirect all the traffic to be HTTPS. We could restrict specific HTTP methods. So if we don't want to have puts, uh, we can say we uh, not include those. Uh, we can restrict the viewer access, which we will look into a little bit more detail here. We can set the TTLs, which is time to expiry uh, or time to live, sorry, which says like after we could say every two minutes, the content should expire and then refresh it, right? Depending on how how stale we want our content to be. Um, there is a thing called invalidations in CloudFront, which allow you to manually set, um, uh, so you don't have to wait for the TTL to expire. You could just say, I want to expire these files. This is very useful when you are pushing changes um, to your S3 bucket, because you're gonna have to go manually create that invalidation so those changes will immediately appear. Um, you can also serve back at, uh, at error pages. So if you need a custom 404, you can do that through CloudFront. Uh, and then you can set restrictions. So if you, for whatever reason, um, aren't operating in specific countries and you don't want um, uh, those countries to consume a lot of traffic, which might cost you money, you can just restrict them saying, I'm blocking these countries. Or, or you could do the other way and say, I only whitelist these countries. These are the only countries that are allowed to view things from CloudFront.